schoolmaster and his scholar. A schoolmaster was walking upon the bank of a river, not far from his school. He heard a cry, as of someone in distress. Running to the side of the river, he saw one of his scholars in the water, hanging by a bough of a willow. The boy, it seems, had been learning to swim with corks, and fancying that he could now do without them, had thrown them aside. The force of the stream hurried him out of his depth, and he would certainly have been drowned had not the friendly branch of a willow hung in his way. The master took up the corks, which were lying upon the bank, and threw them to his scholar. Let this be a warning to you, said he, and in your future life never throw away your corks until you are quite sure you have the strength and experience enough to swim without them. Too great assurance is folly. The Sorceress Night and silence had now given repose to the whole world when an old, ill-natured sorceress, in order to exercise her infernal arts, entered into a gloomy wood that trembled at her approach. The scene of her horrid incantations was within the circumference of a large circle, in the center of which was raised an altar where the hallowed vervain blazed in triangular flames. The mischievous hag pronounced the dreadful words which bound all hell in obedience to her charms. She blew a raging pestilence from her lips into the neighboring fields. The innocent cattle died to afford a fit sacrifice to the infernal deities. The moon, by powerful spells drawn down from her orbs, entered the wood. Legions of spirits from Pluto's realms appeared before the altar and demanded her pleasure. Tell me, said she, where shall I find what I have lost, my favorite little dog? How, cried they all, enraged, impertinent Beldam, must the order of nature be inverted, and the repose of every creature disturbed for the sake of thy little dog? There are many people who would unhinge the world to ease themselves of the smallest inconvenience. The Lion and the Boar On a summer day, when the great heat induced a general thirst, a lion and a boar came at the same moment to a small well to drink. They fiercely disputed which of them should drink first, and were soon engaged in the agonies of a mortal combat. On their stopping to take breath for the fiercer renewal of the strife, they saw some vultures waiting in the distance to feast on the one who should fall first. They at once made up their quarrel, saying, It is better for us to make friends than to become the food of vultures. The man at strife is always in peril. The 